Good evening. Welcome to tonight's regular board meeting. We welcome you. Um, Renee, if you would show everyone present, and at this time we will share in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Ms. Perkins, would you like to read the first board salute, please? I would love it. If you give me just a second here, let me get in. Okay. Um, it's with great pleasure that tonight this board would like to recognize three contracted bus drivers who retired at the end of this school year. These employees have transported our most precious cargo, our kids, for a total of 122 years. Um, if they would come forward, if they're here. Paul Kraft has driven our students for 42 years. Don Tetley for 40 years. Okay, thank you, Paul. And Matilda Atkins for 40 years. Thank you for dedicating to Mr. Pavey, would you like to take the next one, please? I would be happy to. Mr. Hopgood, could you stand, please? The board salutes Director of Facilities Steve Hopgood for recently completing the required courses for the Indiana Association of School Business Officials Voluntary Certification Program. His certification designation in Facilities Director, which required 74 hours of instruction. The certification acknowledges the experience and knowledge that Mr. Hobgood has regarding the school business management area. The certification program was created in order to recognize the professional achievements of its members. In order to qualify for certification, an individual must be an IESBO member and fulfill all of the personal, ethical, and professional requirements as established by IESBO. Congratulations, Steve Hobgood.
right, next on tonight's um, schedule is approval of the agenda, and we do need to make sure we approve tonight's agenda with the personnel addendum added. Move to approve with the addendum as requested. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Second. Thank you, Mr. Pavey. Any discussion? All, right, all in favor of ten approving tonight's agenda with the ad personnel addendum added, please raise your hand. All right, that's 7 0. Thank you. Next, we have approval of minutes from our previous meetings. We have uh, executive, regular, and special meeting minutes. Thank you, Mrs. Kraft. Is there a second? Thank you, Teresa. Any questions? All right, all in favor? All right, that's 7 0. Thank you. We do have a public comment this evening on an agenda item. Mr. McLaughlin, would you come forward? You know the rules, don't you? <laughs> <coughs> Members of the Board of Trustees, Administration, and Public, my name is John McLaughlin. I am the treasurer of the Greater Clark Education Association and the appointed chair of the GCEA Corporate Discussion Team. I'm here tonight to speak to the proposal to extend the student day for all Greater Clark schools by 10 minutes. I have put in front of you, and Ms. Renee has a, a copy of a draft of this, excuse the typos. It is our understanding that this proposal is an attempt to address scheduling issues at the high school level with respect to the district's impact program. We further understand that attempts to address the issue solely at the high school level by adding 10 minutes to those students' days would impact all levels because it would delay the bus schedules. Accordingly, we understand that this problem was addressed by the current proposal to extend the student day for all levels. We have significant concern with the proposal as is. The proposal packs 10 minutes on to the end of the student day at all levels. Currently, impact time frames are being met at the elementary level. We understand that the middle schools have been able to create schedules that meet the requisite impact time frames. However, the high schools were not having success adjusting their schedules accordingly. Our foremost concern with the proposed changes in the student day is safety. As proposed, the student days at all Greater Clark Middle and High Schools will now end at the time, same time that the teachers' days end. That is to say, there will be no <coughs> supervisory role played by teachers when these schools dismiss. There will be no structured hall monitoring, bus monitoring, or parking lot monitoring. While we believe that teachers, as they always have, would step up and provide necessary supervision on a voluntary basis, we do not believe that the safety of our students should be left to the chance of which teacher or teachers might or might not be there on a given day after the contract is ended. Safety is also a primary concern at the elementary level. Teachers take a much more active role in dismissal at the elementary level. Their role is not one of just supervision, but of active participation in the dismissal process. Teachers walk, excuse me, walk students to their buses, they see them to their car rides, and they take them to their daycare vans. In some instances, they even walk them to their after-school care. Also, the organizational skills of elementary school students can be such that it takes them considerably longer to pack up at day's end than secondary students. Currently, there is a 15-minute buffer at the elementary level between the end of the student day and the end of the teacher day. Personally, on the best of days, it took 15 minutes to get my students to pack up, get to their designated dismissal locations, and to get safely away. Teachers from other schools have expressed to me that, this is a min that it is a minimum of 20 minutes on the best of days to see to it that each child is safely away from school. Again, while we believe that teachers would not allow for elementary students to face these without assistance, we do not believe that it should be left for volunteers. In fairness, the superintendents has assured us that safety would be addressed, and we believe this that this administration keeps safety at the top of its list of concerns. It has been suggested that stipends could be used to address these issues. However, our calculations based on at least, and we <coughs> emphasize at least, an additional 10 minutes per day for a teacher to extend the contract day would cost in excess of $1,000 per teacher at the average teacher salary. The number of teachers necessary to assure the same safety net that is in place now would result with stipends that would be considerably more expensive. In 
closing, we want to make it clear that this is a safety concern for students, and this is in no way an objection to 10 more minutes in the student day. Indeed, we believe that the hurried nature of this proposal has lent itself to our concern. We first encountered this proposal in its language yesterday. The GCEA corporate discussion team, for whom I speak, has not had sufficient time to discuss and propose alternatives or discuss the specifics of any stipend plan. We believe time is what is needed here, and further believe that with the proposal now before this board, we need to make our concerns known. Thank you for your time. Thank you, John. And, and just so you know, um, when that vote comes up, we will give Dr. Mellon time to respond in his recommendation. Thank you. All right. Um, we have a consent agenda with a personal addendum. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. White. Or was that Mr. Hall? Either one. <laughs> Mr. Hall said it. Okay. okay. Mr. Whitehall. <laughs> Any discussion? Next time I'll go like this. <laughs> Questions? All right. All in favor of approving consent agenda items one through five with a personnel addendum, please raise your right hand. And that's 7 0. Thank you. Next, we have gifts to buildings. Mr. Satterley? This one's pretty short, but it's a pretty good one. The <laughs> yeah. Walton Hazel Bells Foundation, they, they seem to come through when it's needed most times. And $10,000 to the tennis shelter was quite a nice contribution. So, Les, I'm sure, is behind that. And I wish he was here sometime. We need to get Les here sometime to thank him. But, anyhow. We want to make a motion to accept the gifts to schools. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Thank you, Mrs. Kraft. Any discussion? All in favor of approving tonight's gifts to buildings? That's 7 0. Thank you. We're going to vary off course here just a little bit since we approved the personnel addendum that included a new administrative executive director. Opportunity, no. Executive Director. We're going to give Dr. Mellon a time to recognize that person. Uh, we, since I've been here over the course of the past year, we've made many adjustments uh, administratively. Uh, we've saved, uh, reduced general fund expenditures uh, in, and uh, uh, by over $700,000 related to administrators. But we've also made adjustments uh, as we've gone. Uh, we've put people in different positions. Uh, as we've eliminated certain positions, we've created others. Uh, we've eliminated uh, two central office positions this year, and we are bringing uh, one of those positions back with a different title. Our elementary operation is an extremely large <coughs> focus of our school corporation. Uh, we have 12 elementary buildings and is a significant aspect of what we do. Uh, kids build their foundation for our school corporation at the elementary level. What we felt we needed was an individual that had tremendous experience as a leader at the elementary level that could step up and take on that part of our operation. Uh, interviewed many candidates and the person that rose to the top in the recommendation is for Kim Hartledge who was our Utica Elementary Principal to become our Executive Director for Elementary Education. And uh, Kim is here this evening. Kim will start her duties uh, tomorrow. Uh, so <laughs> we've given her a lot of time to prepare. And I'd like to have her stand and be recognized at this time. We have a tremendous group board, as you know, of elementary principals, and we're very proud of all of them. And uh, Kim, we believe, will be a leader of leaders for us moving forward. And uh, we feel fortunate to have her joining our team. Um, we look forward to many good things to come. So thank you. Welcome, Kim. At this time, we're going to go ahead and start with our action item agenda, and um, Sandy's going to talk about revisions to three policies and um, we just returned from an Indiana School Board conference in which we 
attended a class where we realized we maybe needed to make a couple of minor adjustments on these second readings. So keep in mind that we're going to hopefully vote to approve these second readings with a few amendments, which Sandy's going to go over. Thank you and good evening. Yes, actually, uh, we have on second reading the policy for employees on the telecommu telecommunications acceptable use policy and also for students. And they both track in the language uh, very closely about the responsibilities, the privileges, and the rules. And with the uh, information that has returned through the uh, conference that you attended, we're going to ask that you approve on second reading both of these policies this evening subject to the inclusion of the following, and that will be item number three, network rules, uh, Provision A, which currently states, be polite, do not be abusive in your messages to others. And we will add on the one for uh, employees, staff members have no expectation of privacy in the use of school-owned equipment. And for students, we'll add, students have no expectation of privacy in the use of school-owned equipment. That is just to make sure people understand that what they use the computers for, is subject to review if there's a concern about abuse. Also in item H, still under number three, it says all communications and information accessible via the network should be assumed to be private property. And we're adding in to be the private property of Greater Clark County Schools. We're adding that in H of both of those policies. So with those two additions, both in um, the student policy and the employee policy, I would recommend at this time, and you can take them both together if you so desire, uh, to approve J1 and J2. Move to um, accept both policies with the revisions. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Thank you. thank you, Mrs. Kraft. Any discussion? Thank you for your work on the Sandy. It's important that we Make sure everybody understands that those are used for school business Absolutely. versus Madam personal President, business. I just would like to add one thing, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, we learned not only what you added there about this, but we also learned that Greater Clark is pretty much on the cutting edge in our state. Uh, some other school districts, which were much bigger than ours and probably had a whole lot more going on than uh, money-wise, but not anything else. Um, they were rolling out, what, what did the one say? <laughs> Two classes. Two grade levels mm -hmm. next year, and they right. were so excited about it. And we were sitting there, and we went, two? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're, they're taking tiny steps, and we're getting it all out there, and I appreciate that. I think it's going to make a big difference in our classroom. Okay. Absolutely. Any other discussion? All right. All in favor of approving items one and two with the revisions? Please raise your hand. Thank you. That's 7 0. Policy 5148? That's correct. This is our one to one computer <coughs> device policy for second reading. And, and just like you said, we're not rolling out two classes. We're getting ready to roll out 8,000 <laughs> of our Chromebooks. <laughs> and it's going to be a, a project in and of itself to get those rolled out and into the hands of all of our students so that we can begin this school year. But it is exciting and, and we're really looking forward to it. We've had this one-to-one uh, -one policy in place for a number of years, but we are making changes to take laptop, the word laptop out and insert in the place of laptop computer devices. And um, that, that's pretty much where it tracks through the entire document is we made the changes on laptops. Um, it references our responsible use policy and um, states that homework performed on Chromebooks will be turned in electronically and there won't be need for uh, printing capabilities. So we're excited about it. it. Like I said, it's a policy we've had in place for a while. We're just updating it. This is the one that the parents sign off on and the students sign off on, understanding their responsibilities for the maintaining this equipment in proper order. So uh, unless you have further questions, we'd ask that you approve this with the recommendations presented. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Parkins. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Pavey. Any questions? 
Yeah, I've got a question on the denial form. What happens if a, if a parent denies access for their kid, and isn't this going to be a big percentage of the grade, a big part of the curriculum now? They'll be day users. I mean, they'll, 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 okay. they'll use oh. it, but they'll just be a day user. Yeah. So they won't be able to take it home. Yeah, but so they can access the Internet in the building at school, but not take the device home. So, so if the in government class, if the teacher says, "All right, we're going," you got to go out on the internet and look up past presidents. If a kid has this, then that kid goes to the media center, looks it up in encyclopedias or what? Do we offer that? Any other questions? Uh, and board, if I just might add, that's another thing we learned a little bit and talked about today is the real key factor is for our parents to be fully informed on everything we're doing here with these Chromebooks. And so the rollouts that are coming up July 18th, July 22nd, July 23rd um, are going to be vital for our parents to attend. And they, they must attend in order for those students to receive the Chromebook because the parents have to sign off on what will be now the reasonable use policies. So uh, it'll be vital for us to inform our parents and make sure they're fully aware of how we're utilizing the Chromebooks, why uh, access to the Internet would be important, answer whatever questions or concerns our parents might have. And I think we're also going to add another date, uh, if I might add, the 31st of July uh, will be another date that we're going to add to roll out computers uh, at specific building locations. We'll be getting much more information out here very shortly on all of this, but we want to make sure our parents understand that it's critical that they know exactly what this process is all about. So Dr. Mellon, if they don't sign the consent form, then they will not be issued a Chromebook except for day use then, right? Or That's correct. They will not. They'll have to sign. They'll have to sign the documents. In but if a parent does not come in and does not sign any of the documents, then that student will not have access to that Chromebook. Ex will we still allow access during the school day only? Gotcha. Will both sets of parents be notified? In other words, if, if a parent who doesn't have full, full custody shares on weekends and then the other parent would have the child with the mm -hmm. computer for the weekend, are we going to notify both parents in that case? Because we have a lot of those parents. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. There's no. A primary. Yeah, there's a physical custodian. The one that has the primary physical custody of the child right. is the one that signs off. The one that enrolls the child. Okay, the but could we let the other parent know there was a session so that they could come and be? That will be really. That I, could I be in the media, but I mean, a lot of times we don't even have 
some of that information. Some okay, parents, if you did have, if the parent, the parent of the, in most cases, the parent who has physical custody is the one responsible to sign the documents. That doesn't exclude the parent without custody from being informed, mm -hmm. right. and unless there's legal paperwork to the contrary. So, for us to be thinking that through a little bit to make sure that those students with parents who are no longer together mm -hmm. will have to think through how we best can inform mm -hmm. because the paperwork will have to be signed by the parent with physical custody but that doesn't mean that the parent without physical custody uh, should not also be informed right. in some level. We'll have to think that through and I don't know what the easiest way will be to do that but well, my point is, a lot of times on weekends, that parent will have the child, yeah. the parent who doesn't have custody. So then that's when they will be using to do their homework and so forth. And thinking. They may not even know how to use Chromebook. This is my opinion. Part of the responsibility of the parent, I think, with the physical custody would be to have the conversation with that parent who does not have custody to make sure that that parent is at least aware also. In other words, our parents need to be responsible enough regardless of their own relationship issue that you have a child here and they'll have this computer and this is what you must yeah. do so the, I it, there's not going to be a perfect world here but we'll continue to do what we can we certainly won't exclude any parents from getting that kind of information unless there's a legal document that excludes them I'm just curious thank yeah. you sure any other discussion or questions all right, all in favor? All right, that's 7 0. Thank you. Next, we have a change in a transportation route. That's correct. And just to um, give you a little information, I'll kind of switch hats over to transportation. Um, we've been working to try to look at combining routes, and both with our fleet contractors and also with our corporation drivers. Uh, we have an opportunity up in the um, Charlestown area to. Uh, expand Teresa Wimsett's current route, number 54, bus 6C, to add an elementary portion of the route. And basically what she'll do is she'll drive the route twice because we're a tier tier system up in that uh, area. She'll drive once to transport elementary students and then we'll repeat that route for middle and high school students. It increases her daily route time and mileage, uh, so her contract will go from 220 per day to 440. And then uh, in doing this, according to Mr. Green, we've been able to um, eliminate one other route that's up in that area. So um, the recommendation would be to approve the change to her route as described. I'll make that Thank you, Mrs. Kraft. Is there a second? second. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Any questions? All in favor? Thank All right. You. Thank you, Sandy. Next, we have agent of... I'm sorry, renewal of agent of record contract? Board, since 2006, uh, Mr. Pepper Cooper has been the insurance agent of record for the school corporation. I've had the opportunity to work with Mr. Cooper this year, and um, it has come time to uh, consider a renewal of his contract. And in fact, I would like to recommend to you this evening that based upon his performance uh, over the course of uh, almost eight years now, uh, seven years for sure, that uh, he has performed uh, admirably. Uh, cost of insurance has uh, stayed uh, as reasonable as possible uh, under the market conditions that we have, and I think that he's uh, operated with the best interest of our employees in mind. And so at this point in time, there's been a contract uh, that we've entered, um, we've, uh, we've come to terms and agreed upon that I would like you as a board to approve just a couple of highlights of that contract. It is a one-year contract. Um, there's a compensation piece uh, that's built in. Uh, there's an estimated compensation of $65,000 uh, that is dependent upon uh, commissions on insurance that is uh, a business that is done from an insurance perspective. It's also important that people understand that it's not just health insurance, but also property and casualty, workman's comp, there's disability. He basically represents our corporation with all of our different insurance packages. So uh, because of his performance, um, board, it, it is my recommendation that we um, approve 
a one-year contract uh, for Mr. Pepper Cooper as our insurance agent of record. Okay. Is there a motion? Moved to accept. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Second, Ms. Perkins. Thank you. Any questions? Any discussion? I'll just make one comment. Same thing I told Jared the other day. I think Pepper's done a wonderful job, and it works, and our non-reverting fund has grown. So I agree with you. Based on performance, we should move forward. Any further? All right. All in favor? And opposed? That's 6-1. Thank you. Next is a reappointment of library board representative. Board, um, it is important, as you know, uh, for us to, on an annual basis, um, reappoint a individual to the Jeffersonville Township Public Library Board. And it would be my recommendation that we reappoint Steve Palmquist as Greater Clark's appointment to the Jeffersonville Township Public Library Board. Thank you, Mrs. Kraft. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. White. Questions? All in favor? That's 7-0. Thank you. Next, we have lengthening our school day. Board, um, let me start with the reasoning for this. And I appreciate Mr. McLaughlin's comments. Um, I feel with our Teachers Association, we've worked very hard uh, in the first year that I've been here to communicate um, as effectively as we can. I will take responsibility for the fact that because it's summertime, it's been challenging to get all of our people together, um, not just from a teacher's side, but more, uh, more specifically administratively. Our principals don't come back and report until the 15th. What we started with was this idea that we want to make sure that we have enough time in our day to provide individualized instruction for all students. We were struggling at the high school level to make that happen. The school day was already, in at least my opinion, too short at the high school level. And we asked our principals to start meeting with their staff and at the middle school and high school levels they started to meet with their staff to try to figure out how do we build a 30-minute impact period which is designed to individualize instruction to meet the needs of students. They were trying to work it out to see how a schedule might work at the middle school and high school levels. The high schools had very little success with that. The middle schools had uh, not very strong success with it. The elementaries did a very good job of getting it built in. When we sat down, we started with the premise, can we just adjust the high school day by 10 minutes and not impact anyone else? But that was impossible because of bus transportation. We sat down, we looked at all of our bus schedules, and we could not find the extra 10 minutes where we could just lengthen the high school days and not have any impact on the middle school elementaries. So once we figured out that that was not possible, then we sat down to say, what would happen if we increased the length of our school day by 10 minutes across all of our buildings? We sat down and we went building by building and we looked at it and we were trying to not only, the number one consideration was the impact period to help kids. Number two consideration was we wanted to protect our zero periods, which are a professional development time frame that all of our teachers have uh, before the school day begins. And it's the time that we provide professional development opportunities at a building level for our teachers, knowing that literacy and one-to-one -one computing are going to be huge initiatives to be implemented next year. We needed to protect that time frame. So we said we want to have at least a minimum of a 30-minute uninterrupted zero period. So that was another variable that we utilized. So when we put that all together, we can make, oh, third, we had to honor the current teacher's contract. And the current teacher's contract is seven and a half hours per day. So within those three parameters, we had to see how would this work. Again, we're increasing the length of the student day by 10 minutes within the current teacher contract day of seven and a half hours. What will happen is, in this is not finalized as of yet, 
But what was potentially going to happen is middle school and high school students would end their day at the same time as teachers. At the elementary level, they would end their day, five teachers would end their day five minutes after the student day. Now what we need to do on the 15th with our administrative team is we're going to look at the specific schedule because what we did is we built in 15 minutes of time from the time that the zero period would end until, te until students would begin their school day. So keep in mind we have a 30 minute zero period uninterrupted. We have a 15 minute time frame where technically students would be able to enter the building and they'd have 15 minutes or so to eat breakfast and then be in their classes. What we need to do is go building by building and I have great respect for our administrative team and work out the specifics of that time frame so that at the end of the day that we make sure that we are providing adequate supervision for our students. Now I have three children in our school corporation. I want to make sure they're always safe. That's selfish of me, but I represent you and I represent our school corporation with 10,500 students and there's no way I could make a recommendation to you or to our public that I can't back up and say that we're going to make sure kids are safe. There are several options that we have in mind that we are going to lay out to our administrators and with GCEA. Several options in terms of how we're going to make this work. And one of the options could involve us having to pay a, a, a potential stipend to some teachers to help supervise at the end of the school day as students load buses and get into cars. I've had some preliminary conversations with building principals at all levels and no one believes that there will be a problem in us coming up with a plan that will make sure that our students are safe at the end of the day with, with adequate supervision for them as they get onto buses get into cars or walk off of property. So I guess I want to assure GCEA that although everything else we've brought forth, we've had a more concrete plan of attack up to this point. I apologize that it's not more concrete now, but we've struggled because of trying to figure out all the variables in doing it at a time frame where most of our people aren't working. So we believe and I believe with all my heart that this is good for kids. The extra 10 minutes of, of school, of instruction for kids can never hurt them in any way. It's only going to help them. We're going to be able to have more time to help kids individually through our impact period. We're respecting our teachers by maintaining their seven and a half hour day. We're continuing to honor the zero period to provide professional development to our teachers and we'll make sure that our students are safe at the end of each and every school day. And we have several options that we'll discuss on the 15th as we, all of our administrators come back to work. Then we'll begin to share that plan of attack with GCEA to make sure that they are on board and familiar and comfortable with the process. Why are we having to do this now tonight? Our parents need to be informed. There, we are already um, getting a lot of inquiries related to the upcoming school year because of the balanced calendar and school starting so much earlier. We have to be able to get out information to them as it relates to what's happening with these start times. So the student day is impacted, the teacher day in terms of its length is not impacted. Might we have to make some adjustments with the teacher day. We'll be prepared to look at those options, but I think it's it's critical to our school corporation moving forward we, that we do this for our kids. And with cooperation uh, from our teachers association and I've asked them to trust me uh, when I say that we'll make sure that we make this work because with, if there's one way for me to get fired very quickly it'll be because I did not provide a safe environment for our kids and I will not ever let that happen. So that's my recommendation is that we lengthen the student day by 10 minutes for this upcoming school year. Is there a motion? I'll move to accept. And a second? Second. Mr. Pavey, thank you. Any questions or discussion? 
just just a couple comments and I'm I'm with Dr. Mellon I have a daughter in school as well so I am putting my trust in you that you come up with a plan in the next few weeks and if the plan comes back on the 23rd and you don't have one then we might have to stick kick go back and punt mm -hmm. and say I heard this didn't work but but I do have that trust because you haven't shown me in the last year any plan yet that you've brought forward that didn't work so that trust is there um, I do agree the zero period is important that we leave that alone that's been a something we've been able to monitor successfully and nothing but positive from it um, did get a lot of phone calls concerning this today and I'm just hoping everyone will throw the same trust in you and the GCEA to be able to work this out between now and the start of school thank you if, if I understand this correctly, the, the teacher day is going to remain at 7 hours and 30 minutes. That's correct. But the elementary day and the middle school day and the high school day, student day, is going to increase 10 minutes. That's correct. And that, if I've done my math right here, that means in the middle and high, there's 45 minutes that the teacher is under contract where there are, are supposed to not be students in their care, mm -hmm. 45 minutes. And part of that 45 minutes is this zero, and we're trying to get 30 minutes into that. Mm -hmm. And in the elementary, they have 50 minutes. So, and I, I appreciate the comments from the Teachers Association. Mm -hmm. I personally have gone through the exact same thing that we're dealing with in another school corporation. <coughs> and I am convinced that with the discussion that goes on in this school corporation and your word that it's going to work safety, mm -hmm. I, I can support this. The, the only thing that I'm concerned with is, again, the amount of time, and I understand what the teachers are saying about that, but like you said, Mr. Satterley, if we can't work it out so that the kids are safe, then we can only consider, but I think we need to move forward. I, I just feel like more time is needed, and I believe if you have more discussion, dialogue with our teachers' union, that a, a complete plan could be brought to the board, not plan A, then we got to wait for B and C down the road, but uh, I just think more time is needed, more discussion, more dialogue with the teachers' union. I would be lying if I didn't say this didn't concern me somewhat, um, because it does. I mean, obviously we're um, we're changing, we're, we're getting the departure time of students closer to the departure time of teachers. So I, I get that. Um, something Mr. McLaughlin said that kind of stuck with me is we need more time, Mr. Hall. You mentioned that as well, which tells me that everybody feels like this can be worked out. Um, I think Dr. Mellon makes a very valid point that we're within three weeks of school and if we go another two weeks, we're within a week of trying to notify parents of what the schedule is going to look like. So you throw that in there, you throw Chromebooks in there, you throw a uh, balanced calendar in there and I mean it's going to be a lot to hit the public with. And so um, I, I feel like we've got a great working relationship right now with the GCEA. And I think, Dr. Mellon, I, I trust you. I mean, you know, you've been, um, you've been all about safety from, from day one. And I, as you said, you're vested in the community and in the schools with having children in there. So I, I feel confident that this will get worked out and it will be best for everybody. So I, that's why, you know, I'm going to support it. I do appreciate um, the comments, though, because what makes me feel good about it is uh, this wasn't a selfish uh, venture brought on by the teachers. This was a, a genuine concern, and I share that concern. I just feel like we can get it worked out. So, any other? All right. All in favor of extending our school day ten minutes? Student day. Right? Student day. Student. Sorry, student school day. Ten minutes. And opposed? All right, so that's six one. Dr. Mellon, I'll just follow that up. Um, you're meeting with your building administrators the 15th, correct? And then you're going to have a meeting, another meeting with GCA on the 16th? 
that's that's the plan that I have and I've shared with them that I would want to sit down. I'll be prepared to meet with them as early as the 16th. Okay. Um, because the 15th, this is a top priority for us to make sure that we have the plan in concrete and that we share that with GCEA so they're fully aware and we make sure we get their feedback as it relates to it. Again, keep in mind, this is not going to be a standard operating procedure for how we do business. This is, we've all year tried to bring things forward to you to approve that are concrete. This is a situation that is one that's somewhat unique and I, I want to assure you this is not something that I will do to the, to the Teachers Association or to you as a board on any kind of consistent basis. I would just ask on sometime within, you know, 24 hours, delayed on the 16th or the 17th, just an email to let us know how things have proceeded and make sure we're on board. We've got it figured out. That'd be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, next we have our annual financial report. Dr. Deichel. There's no action required on this. It's just information only according to Indiana Code. We have to publish our annual financial report between August 1st and August 15th, so you'll see every school corporation in the area publishing their uh, information. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of good information to it. it. It shows our budget for 2012, what was approved, what was actually received, um, how we expended our money, how it was approved, how it was expended. It'll show extracurricular uh, salaries. It'll show teacher salaries, you know, the, uh, the whole gamut of information financially that we have. So that's just to let you know that we're going to publish it and you have a copy of it in your folder or in your packet. Thank you. Tell me when it's over. The mm -hmm. next item up is cancellation of Honeywell contracts. We're always looking to evaluate any of our contracts and uh, over the course of the year we noticed that uh, we could probably do a lot better if we switched um, from Honeywell to train. We think we can save approximately $100,000 by doing this. So we have five agreements currently with Honeywell at different schools, and they all have different dates. We've been with Honeywell for probably close to 15 years. And um, so one of the things that we have to do according to Honeywell's contract is give them 60 days notice. Well, since the board has approved this contract, these contracts, we also have to come back to you and ask for permission to negate the contract. So. We're asking permission now to cancel all of these contracts. We'll send them the 60-day notice, and then in the course over the next eight months or so, we'll come back with uh, training contracts and ask you to approve those. So. All right. Make a motion to accept. Thank you. Madam President. Is there a second? Sorry to jump the gun on you. You're fine. <laughs> Saves me a couple breaths. Is there a second? Somebody. Thank you, Mr. Pavian. Questions or discussion? Mr. Hall? What are these, uh, the savings based on? An hourly rate. And hourly rate. have we got the bid bids in from train? It was just an RFP is all we're looking for. We're looking for a service contract. So our equipment is, is Honeywell. We're switching it over to train, right, Steve? And uh, so that's what we're looking to do. So Train could do either or, and Honeywell could do either or. So that's what we're doing. Honeywell's per hour cost is a lot more expensive than Train's. So this is a service contract? Correct. And Honeywell provides us service on their equipment? Correct. At those, at those five? In those five schools. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the five schools, but there's also corporation district wide. The first one, February 14th, is a district wide one that we had created a number of years ago. Okay. So it's for all of our schools. Okay. The agreement for district wide that goes until 2014, let's say we cancel the contract with Utica Elementary. But it's, it's Honeywell and Train, they're going to be working side by side? What's going to happen is we're going to still stay with Honeywell until February 14th. We're going to send them notice now that they're going to be canceled as of February 14th, 2014. Okay. So they won't be working side, to side by side. It'll be Honeywell up until that contract expires for those agreements. 
then train will take over. But we'll come to you beforehand and, and get a contract with train. Tom, is this going to require equipment change out of any type, or is it strictly service then? Service. Okay. Yeah, it's all for our HVAC equipment. Okay. Any further? All right, all in favor of contract cancellation? And none opposed? That's seven up. And then we'll have Sandy send a letter to them, notifying them well in advance of our 60-day notice, so we don't miss it. Thank Next you. one up is the uh, bid award for uh, our waste. Uh, bids were received on June 11th at 2 o'clock for recycling, single stream, and waste removal garbage service. We received bids from five vendors. Ecotech was the low bidder for our waste management services. The contract will be for a two-year period beginning August 1st, 2013 through July 31st of 2015. The Ecotech bid for a month um, looking at the dumpster cost for garbage was $2,159. Recycling dumpster was $1,177. So a total of $3,337 per month is what we're looking at. We anticipate hopefully once we try to put more into the recycling bin that we could reduce our dumpster costs even further. So that's where we're at right now. So we're asking permission to award it to Is there a motion? Mrs. Kraft, thank you. Is there a second? Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Any questions? All in favor? All right, that's 7-0. Thank you. And last, we have some obsolete equipment that we need to inventory. There a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Any questions? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Next we have board reports and requests. Mr. Hall, do you have any? And uh, Nope. Ms. Perkins? Well, um, this is where I do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to get my act together here. Um, I'd just like to say something about Kim Partledge, our new director of elementary. Uh, I've known her for a long, long, long time. She went to my junior high school. Now, are you, and are you aging her or you? Me. Okay. And right. she that. has always been very driven and very um, particular about her work ethic, and um, I think that that the, the vision that we're doing in the school corporation is incredible. I think it's, I think it's a wonderful thing for us to do with the elementary and the secondary. Uh, the elementary schools will appreciate her support, and I want to wish her good luck. Mr. White. No, thank you. Mrs. Kraft. I agree with that statement, and I have something that I learned at the conference this weekend that will make you feel excited or scared, one of the two. Uh, Richmond, Indiana School Corporation has a preschool in every elementary. That's all. Mm -hmm. Mr. Satterley? Kim, I just want to tell you congratulations as well. You've done an awesome job across the street. I don't, you don't have far to move, so <laughs> congratulations. Mr. Pavey? Well, um, Travis, looks like you got a little competition. <laughs> so, so welcome, Ms. Hartledge. Glad to have you aboard. All right. Um, the, the board and Dr. Mellon did attend uh, ISBA conference the last two days. We just got back at like 5 o'clock, so we will prepare a report and have that for you at our next board meeting. Um, tonight, I do need to report on another um, item that uh, a business that was conducted by your board in the last week. 
Um, we did complete the annual performance evaluation of Dr. Mellon. His evaluation was based on the evaluation tool that was developed by the Indiana School Boards Association in conjunction with the Indiana Association of Public School Superintendents. This tool was designed for consistency in the evaluation of public school superintendents by school boards across the entire state of Indiana. By board consensus during the evaluation process, Dr. Mellon received an effective rating. In teacher terms, that means 3.0 or better. Based on the terms of Dr. Mellon's contract, receipt of an effective performance does rate him, I'm sorry, based on receipt of an effective performance rating does entitle him to the addition of one year to his existing contract without further board action. So we did want to, however, report that as such, Dr. Mellon's contract is automatically extended through June 30th of 2016. And we thank you for your work this year. We know, and now you've got another principal to hire. Mm -hmm. How many will that make this year? Like 12? Uh, a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we appreciate your work. And um, we're glad that you earned an effective rating. Well, thank you, board. I appreciate that very much. I, uh, uh, I appreciate the... Uh, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate the support. And um, this has been a great first year. I've learned a great deal. Uh, I really love this community. I love this school system. And um, we've, we've really done a lot of great work. We have a lot of great people getting the job done all the time. So as I said earlier, you're only as good as the people who work uh, with you and for you. And we have got great people here. So thank you for the opportunity and the vote of confidence. All right, and we have no public comments on it, non-agenda items. So with that, we'll um, open it up for any closing comments, Mr. Hall. No, thanks. Ms. Perkins? I would like to um, thank Dr. Mellon for um, his editorial, guest editorial this past week mm -hmm. uh, with all the information about the Chromebook rollout. I think that was very helpful to our public to let them know what we're doing here. Thank you. Mr. White? No, thank you. Ms. Kraft? I'm just glad we've settled some things for parents tonight, so they won't be quite as confused. Because yeah. that's a lot for them to take in at one mm -hmm. time. And I just appreciate that we've gotten this far. Mr. Sowers? It is confusing. I'm on the board and I'm confused. <laughs> I don't know what night my kids roll out is. She knows. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> there is a lot for them, and I'm glad we're getting it straightened out. Mr. Baby? Nothing. All right. Um, our next board meeting will be July 23rd, and with that, I'll turn it over for some closing comments from Dr. Mellon. Well, thank you very much, board. Uh, as we have talked about, uh, the school year is right around the corner. Uh, so just a real quick recap for you. On the 15th, all of our administrators report back. We're having an all-day meeting here uh, to get ourselves geared up and ready to go for our, with our administrative team. On the 18th, there'll be the rollout of the Chromebooks for New Washington and Charlestown parents at Charlestown High School. Uh, those details as well as for the 22nd of July and 23rd of July for the, all the Jeffersonville schools, uh, all the details will be provided but with a parent letter. We're going to send out a school messenger. Uh, over the course of the next several days, we're going to be sending out a staff letter uh, to all staff. We're going to be sending out that parent letter, as I mentioned. Uh, we're going to use every means possible to as quickly as we can get all of this information out uh, to our parents with the start of school. And I appreciate Aaron's uh, work and support in helping make all that happen. Our directory is uh, in its final phases, which is always a great document. And we look forward to that being produced. And again, that's something that Aaron coordinates. Um, the 25th e-learning regional conference that we're hosting at Jeff High School. Appreciate Brett Clark, Amy Schellenberg for all their work to make that happen. I think we're going to have around 400 people attend that, and I know many of you are going to take the time to be there as well, and I appreciate that very much. Then our teachers report back opening day, July 29th. Um, we'll be doing professional development with them on the 29th and half the day on the 30th. They'll be back in the buildings for faculty meetings the afternoon of the 30th. 
and then the 31st uh, will be a day for our administrators and teachers to just sort of get their bearings. Um, and then August 1, day 1 for students, so it'll be here before you know it. So that's a quick recap. We got Sandy comment. Oh yeah, my fault. Thank you. Uh board, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um I I would like to have uh Mrs. Lewis come up just for a minute and talk about personnel reports. Um there's been a practice in this district that's unlike any district I've been in in the past that personnel reports go public before any action is taken on those at a public board meeting. And um, it's something that throughout the year has caused potential issues because we care about our staff members and we want to make sure we're honoring and protecting their privacy to the greatest extent we can. So I know our community has very different feelings. We have people in our community that feel different ways about this, but I, I thought, board, it's time for us to look hard at what we're doing with these personnel reports uh, these addendums that we have to bring forward to you have been a problem as well because we have to go live by Friday, by midnight Friday uh, with our personnel reports. Midnight Thursday, they go live and we still have a lot of personnel action that has to take place from Friday all the way to the next Tuesday board meeting. And so what do we have to do? We have to bring an addendum. And the addendums have caused some consternation as well. So to solve all of these issues, we feel that we have a plan that, that makes sense. And I'd like Sandy to sort of talk through that a little bit with you. Certainly, I'll be happy to. Uh, for those of you who have been around Greater Clark as long as I have, which has been a while now, you will know that um, we have made sweeping changes in our process of putting our agendas out there. The law only requires the posting of an agenda uh, at the location of the meeting prior to the meeting. It doesn't really set a timeline for when you have to put the agenda up, and it doesn't set any type of requirement as to the number of times you can change that agenda. In fact, you can do it up to the time you begin your meeting, and then when you adopt your agenda, you can always do your addendums or your amendments as you desire. So. The law requires the posting of an agenda. We have developed a process of transparency by using our board docs and putting the supporting data behind the agenda items out for the general public to see. There's no law that requires us to do that. The board has decided that they want it to be as transparent as possible to give people an understanding of what the actions are at these board meetings by doing this. But one of the problems that it causes when we put personnel reports out there is that, and I'll just use an example, if we have a new hire coming into our community and we want to hire that person, that person may or may not have told their current employer that they are making application for the job. They don't plan to do that until they know they've got the job. If we put the personnel reports out there recommending the hiring of a new employee and that goes live, and then we don't approve that person, that person's current job could be in jeopardy. So, you know, we, the school board meets in a public format, but the meetings are not public. And I know that's kind of hard to understand, but we do not have to allow public comments on agenda items or on other items, but we do that because we want to hear what our employees and constituents of our community have to say. We do that because we want to be as transparent as possible. What the plan is, is to pull back the personnel reports because we do have concerns about some confidentiality issues prior to the board's actions. Once the board acts, then it's a matter of public record. So um, also the notices of public meetings, you know, we have to put those out 48 hours in advance. But again, we just have to post the date, the time, and the place of the meeting and whether it's an executive session, a special meeting, or a regular meeting. There's not anything legally that you have to do to inform the public in advance. But you all have done a good thing by being as transparent as possible. Our recommendation is that we pull the personnel report back and 
it will become public after it's been approved by the board. So board, you know, again, I understand out in our public, they've been used to a certain process. That process is pretty unique um, in the state because it does potentially open us up legally because of potential confidentiality issues. And when you're starting to promote leads publicly and so on before they occur is another example. So board docs is a great tool. We want to continue to, to utilize it. We still want to con connect information uh, to those documents, uh, contracts, uh, initiatives. We want to make sure that they're out there in advance for our public. But as it relates to the specific personnel report, specific personnel items, for all the reasons we've said, we no longer want to continue to do that. And so starting at the next meeting, that would be our plan. You will still have access to those reports privately, um, and therefore there's going to be no need for addendums because we're going to, as we update with different personnel actions, I'll inform you of those updates, and then of course based upon your um, approval and action at the board meeting, then it will become public record and it will be out there for everyone. And that is really how it's done in, in most school systems in the state of Indiana. So I just wanted to inform you of that change. With that, we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Now, when I look at this, it, it, now it might be just me, but I have this. You're messing up. All right. No, I'm not messed up. That's a given.